So just yesterday, Timon Kolosinski got very close to, well, firstly, getting a sub-5 average, and secondly, getting the second ever sub-4 single, officially. Unfortunately, it was a plus-2. And a very close plus-2 as well, only slightly off, 40, over 45 degrees off. But I'm going to go over the scramble and sort of analyze it a bit and the first thing I would notice here is that I certainly wouldn't have chosen a white cross like he did I can see this I can see that and I can see that so it would have been a consideration but I think I would have gone with a green cross and I would have done that so that wait a minute that so that I can then get the cross done and get this first F2L pair ready to do and then go on and finish this off like that and then I do get pretty easy last layer doing that however what Timon did is actually way cleverer so rotated um, to obviously white on bottom. He's not a white cross only solver, so it's just coincidental that it's white cross this time. Um, and he did, so he matched this up, orange being opposite red, like that, and then rotated so that, well, D, um, D prime to get that pair there, and then green in there, then this pair in here, and I have a suspicion he'd he knew exactly what was going on up to this point completely. And he's not even going to... So he's essentially going to do an XXX cross. Because he's not actually going to align the cross correctly until he's inserted three F2L pairs. I've got them prepared. So he does U2, R, U, R, R, U prime, R prime to get insert that in for that. He's then going to insert these both at the same time here so that he can then align this up with a wide U prime do the standard of this insert here and then apparently this is an OLLCP that he did to finish it off I don't know if he knew he was going to get a PLL skip I think there's a reasonable chance he did because he, to get a 3.75, surely he must have stopped the timer very quickly. He, there mustn't have been any messing around with that. But um, he does this um, OLL. Which, interestingly, um, isn't the one I would do. But I think I might be switching to that one. Because what I, I discovered what I would do is the left version of that. Which is actually like that. Which is a really silly in many ways. I, I can do it quite fast, but I think I might switch to that. But it does do the same thing in terms of the PLL. So I think it's just the same algorithm, but from the other, from a different angle. So I guess the next thing to do after explaining his solution is to try and beat him. Yes, I'm going to try and beat Timon, because obviously his solve was 5.75, so if I can do the same scramble in under 5.75 seconds with his same solution, then I, I guess I beat him, don't I?
So there we have it, 5.5 seconds. I think what I realized was actually turning aggressively is pointless, but obviously I beat his 5.75, which he got with a plus two. Doing that in 3.75 seconds, I have no idea, honestly. And he didn't just do it after loads of practice of memorizing a solution. Because, of course, I could do that blindfolded now because I've memorized a solution. He just did it. And he didn't have the entire thing planned. He probably had, like, three F2L pairs planned. But he didn't have it all planned. And yet, 3.75 was ridiculous. I don't know. I've been cubing for nine years. And how you do that, I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And, yep, I think he still uses the GAN 11M Pro. I don't know why he hasn't switched to the GAN 12, but you can buy either of them at speedcubing.org. So, go and do that.